Good morning, everyone. So good to see you in the house of our Lord today. That's amazing how many people are here. There's so many folks that are out sick. So it's so wonderful to see all of you gathered here with us today. And Miss uh, June and Julie are covering uh, as our musicians today. I want you to be in prayer for Andy and Lori. Both of them are down with the, uh, uh, just under the weather uh, and a number of our leaders as well. So we just want to be in prayer for all of them. So as we have our prelude today, as we mention each week, the altar is open. If anybody wants to step forward and pray just a few moments while I light the candles that shows the light of Christ inside of our hearts. Say amen. 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 Thank you, Miss June. That was beautiful, beautiful. Let's go to the good Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that are gathered here today. May your Holy Spirit guide us in this hour together. May your Spirit fill us with your precious love. And we will always, always, Lord, give you the praise and glory. And may all of God's children say... If you have your bulletins, hopefully you picked up one when you came in. If you'll open that up, Miss Bonnie will kind of lead us through our announcements. Good morning and welcome to our worship service. Do we have any guests with us who wish to be acknowledged? I'm not a guest, but a oh. member of the church. Yes, Cheryl. Good but to I'll see you. We'll get with you afterwards. Go ahead, Miss Bonnie. Yes. Welcome, Sean. I 
I'm glad that all of you are with us, especially the guests. And if someone wants to have some more information about our church, there is a gift for new people at the Narthex in the lobby. So if you will stop at the Welcome Center, they'll give it to you and give you all about the services that we have here at the church. You're more than welcome. There are no Vesper services this evening. There is no Stephen ministry class on Monday this week. Monday at 6 p.m. is the Agape meeting in the youth building. The Second Life Thrift Shop has a meeting at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. Thursday at noon, the United Methodist Men are meeting, and the associate pastor from the First Baptist is going to be their speaker. All men are welcome. This Sunday is Change for Change Sunday, and there is a bucket on the round table. Next Sunday will be the fifth Sunday, and an offering for the F Florida Children's Home will be taken at that time. And there are envelopes out there if you want to pick up the envelope today instead of waiting until next week. They will be there next week also. I'm glad you're all with us and enjoy the service. The choir will give us a call to worship. I mean, what else can go wrong this morning? Oh, don't ask that. Don't say that. Uh, I'm sorry. I take that back. Um, you know, when I got the text this morning from Lori saying that she and Andy both were sick, and it was like, oh, okay. So, anyway, we'll, we, I told her we'll make do. We'll get through somehow. So, we will. With the Lord's help, we will. And y'all, I told, I told the choir, I said, I, when we had our prayer before we came in, I said, just let the Lord give grace to the congregation that they can understand that we're, we're not quite all there this morning when we were trying, trying to get Julie. We were just trying to decide who was going to play what. So anyway, if y'all join me for our hymn of praise this morning, and you'll stand and we'll turn to page 555, and we'll sing Forward Through the Ages. And this is the old um, Onward Christian Soldiers melody, if you're familiar with that. Move the faithful spirit. 
Remain standing, if you will, and Bonnie will lead us in our responsive reading. It's found on page 750, Psalm 19, and we're going to do the second response. Please join the choir. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has sent a tent for for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and runs its course with joy, like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its heat. Hear the commandments of life. Join us in the Gloria Patre. may be seated. If you'll turn your bulletin over, we have our prayer concerns, and we always like to begin with some praise reports. I'm happy to report to you from our Harmony Preschool, our director, um, Crystal has had her second baby, and everybody is good. Little Wyatt, can you put your hands together? Uh, her in chance, that's their second child, and it's just, it's just adorable. Uh, the committee has given them a leave, obviously, a maternity leave. And the school will be opening back tomorrow. They were closed this last week because one of the teachers uh, tested positive, but they've run the day, so it will be open uh, tomorrow morning. 
Also want to be in special prayer for Pastor Chris. Now, I had somebody that uh, worships with us online, and they said, you keep talking about Pastor Chris, and I don't know who that is. So let me mention uh, to you that she is the pastor, a United Methodist pastor at Lowell Prison, this is the uh, prison in Ocala for women. She runs the uh, church called the Oasis, United Methodist Church within the prison. It is the second largest women's prison in the United States of America. They have a big event Tuesday night. A lot of our folks are going over there um, and they're taking shoes. Ladies, if you have any extra shoes, you could bring them up tomorrow. And then the folks are leaving early Tuesday afternoon and going there. And they'd be more than glad to take your shoes for the inmate. So let's be in prayer for Pastor Chris and all of those activities. We have one final praise report. We've all been praying for Jeannie Tarkington. And Tom, you know, her husband is the chairperson of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Um, Jeannie got a new liver, 1.45 a.m. Saturday. She was in surgery all the way to 7.30 Saturday morning, and uh, right now she is doing very good. Uh, so let's just keep all of them in our prayers. And Tom, her husband, said, please pray also for the donor's family. And uh, you can imagine how difficult that's been. Ina Murdoch, I saw her yesterday at the uh, hospice house. Let's continue to remember her in our prayers. We had on Friday Esther Martinez uh, memorial service here, and then we went over to Grand Living where she lived the last few years and did a service uh, there as well. We also want to remember all the COVID families, so many in our congregation that are struggling right now. And so uh, they're having to stay at home, of course. So let's keep them all lifted up to the Lord. Virgil Reed is still in the hospital, but hopes to move back to a rehab closer here. He is in Tampa. I want to be in prayer for Willie Ray. He's back home from the hospital and he's doing much better. His surgery was a success. The Emmaus Weekend, we've got a community now within the church, and uh, one of our very own, Don, is, is, is involved in Frank, and so um, being a part of the Emmaus community, and hopefully some of you will be a part of that in the future, uh, we have nine men that are going to be attending there from other churches in Leesburg. And uh, we always, each host church takes some of the groceries. So we have the list in the office. So if any of you are interested in participating, we're going to buy up the, whatever is needed. So if you'd like to give funds in that name and drop it in the offering plate, or if you want to buy some of the groceries, just call tomorrow. We have to have them tomorrow so that Don can take them with him. And we're very excited about his ministry in the church. So be in prayer for them. Bob Gunby's surgery went well. Mary Ellen Weimert is back up in, in Ohio. Her father did pass away or he died, went on to heaven. And so if you can keep them in your prayers. Val Carnicia called and his mother was rushed to the hospital and uh, she is stable right now, but she had pneumonia. So if you would be in prayer for Val Carnicia's mother. Hugh Nance's father was in the hospital. Is he still there, Donna? No, he's, at home. he's at home, okay. So we've been praying for Hugh Nance's uh, uh, father. Um, and so I'm glad he's back home. This is Donna's father-in-law. Um, Al Gillette, they come to the 930 service and the Thursday service. His wife fell. And so he just called me before we came into service and she is at Crystal River Hospital. And I'm going to be heading there after the service and uh, after our time here. And uh, it appears she's had a stroke. Said that the left side is paralyzed. And uh, so if we can be in prayer, the, the hospital's full. And so they're in the ER. So he said that it, she seemed to be regaining some strength this morning. So if you can keep them in your prayers, that's Alice Gillette. I know they would appreciate that. And then the last one that we do have is Bobby Ruiz. Bobby's on our safety team and leads our 1030 worship. And uh, Bobby has just been uh, special there. And we need uh, prayers for him um, in that light. And so uh, Bobby's brother passed away. Um, as well. Let's, Bonnie, before we pray, Susan, do you know what's happened to Ron? Not sure? Passing out. Passing out? Okay. Bonnie, before you pray, let's just take a moment here, a silent prayer for Ron. The safety team's here to check him. Father, we just ask your blessings to be upon Ron. Whatever's happening was ever taken place. 
Thank you, Jesus. Bonnie, if you'll just lift us, lead us to the Lord while our safety team works with Ron. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you in praise and adoration. We come to you seeking your wisdom and your guidance. We know that you are in control and that you will take care of whatever is needed at this time. Lord, be with each one here in the sanctuary. Be with those at home. Let them truly feel your presence as we seek you. Lord, be with our country and our leaders. May they seek your wisdom and guidance. Be with our military, our firemen, our policemen, our EMTs. Help them to feel your presence as they go about their jobs, being the caregivers and helpers that they are so compassionate about. Help us, help us to pray for all of our caregivers as they need your strength and support each and every day. Lord, be with our pastor and his family as he leads us through this very trying time. Also, all those prayers that Pastor Eddie has lifted up and all of those who've been on the prayer chain this week, you know what each and every one of them needs, and you are wooing each and every one to come to you, to seek you. The good Lord can only wait until you knock and ask. He has a gift for each and every one of us, but it is a gift that we must receive, must accept, must reach for. Lord, be with us in all that we say and do. Help us. Help Ron, help our agape team, and show us what steps we need to take. And now, Lord, we lift to you all of our silent prayers. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to continue um, the worship service as they're taking care of Ron. Linda is a retired nurse as well, and our safety team here is, I'm sure, we've called an ambulance, John. Okay, so they will be here in a minute, but let's continue, and they will take care of Ron. Susan, he's going to be, he's in good hands. Stephen, he's in good hands. Just we'll be we're right there. Congregation, if y'all will stand for the scripture reading, we're just going to continue the service and y'all keep Ron and Susan in your prayers. Our scripture this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 20. Just as a body through one, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ, for we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. 
And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? So it is. There are many parts, but only one body. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's remain standing to sing together. Miss June. If you will join me on our hymn of preparation this morning, is on page 549, and we'll do the first and second verses of Where Charity and Love Prevail, page 549. Our choir will bless us now, and the amulet should be here in just a moment, and we'll let them take charge, and then we'll continue the worship service.
we all say amen? Amen. We're going to take a moment again and pray for Ron and Susan. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our wonderful friends here, and we thank you for the paramedics. We thank you for our safety team, Miss Linda, our nurse. Lord, we know that, that Ron is in good hands, so we're praying for your healing touch, that your Holy Spirit will be with him, and that you'll give discernment to these folks and to the uh, hospital to know exactly what has happened, and that you'll give Susan peace that passes all understanding to know that Ron is in your hands. We're trusting that in Christ's precious name. Amen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a couple announcements I need to make, and then I'm going to give just a brief um, description of the sermon. And then we're going to, um, those that would like, we're going to put up a memorial leaf for Walter Davis. We have the family here today, Virginia. So any of you that would like to be with us, we're going to meet over in the narthex on that side. And uh, we usually uh, sing Amazing Grace and share a few words about Walter. And we just have a good time together in the Lord and we'll share the Lord's Prayer. So that will be immediately following the service. Our prayers are going to be uh, with Ron and Susan. I mentioned to you earlier about Al and Alice Gillette. So you'll be able to call the church office or you can call me and find out the update and which hospital they are at and what's taken place uh, as well. Let me mention that the announcement that I have, and that is that next Sunday is the fifth Sunday, and uh, I've worked with the certified lay ministers. We're going to have uh, one of our lay ministers actually do the sermon at all three services. And next week, we've got a wonderful, wonderful presentation uh, from uh, Barbara Keller and Mr. Ray Horn. They're putting together a team to talk about the uh, chapter of love in the Bible. And I'm going to give the Bullywink Bullfrog story, and then I'm going to tie in the prayer time at the end of that service. And that will give my voice a respite, but it'll also be an opportunity for our certified lay ministers to reach out into the kingdom of God and to share uh, together. Can we all say amen? amen? Linda, can you make sure Susan's okay when she goes out or what she's going to do there? Okay. We love you, Ron. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, our safety team. Let's just uh, thank them again all. They're all helping us. Folks, I want to say as they're departing, we've got a wonderful safety team, and, and we're so proud to have them. Uh, so many things that they do, and Linda, um, being one of our nurses, retired nurses, helps us tremendously. Joe, being a good friend, to make sure that uh, Susan is okay taking care of them. In the earlier service, we had a gentleman just come straight up front to the service, wanted to talk to me about the sermon while I was preaching. So the safety team had to work with him. And uh, so that was interesting, as you can imagine. So we live in interesting days. And uh, so we're just do, trying to be proactive and have everything uh, put together the best of our ability. Can we all say amen? I want to mention these beautiful orchids up here. This is from Chuck Morris. He uh, is here at our 930 service. He's a dentist. Some of you know him from Crystal River. And um, he put these in last week. Did not know that when we had the uh, service for Esther Martinez that her favorite color was purple. So that had, it had nothing to do, but it was one of them God moments and came together and blessed the family because different folks dressed in purple in honor of Esther. And it was just really beautiful.
Friends, I want to share, as I said, just kind of a Reader's Digest version of the sermon today since we've had so much <laughs> happening here. Uh, and I know your mind is probably in a million different ways, but I do want to take just a few moments for a devotion, if I can, regarding the passage of Scripture, because it'll prepare us for next week, the love chapter. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it emphasizes that we all have many different gifts, but we are one body. We belong to the Lord, and as long as Jesus Christ is the head, then everything else should fall into place. And the good Lord has given us this wonderful book, the Holy Bible, Old and New Testament, to be guidelines and directions and rules and, and to help us in our path, in our journey, because we're diverse. We have different ideas. We have different uh, situations. We see things differently. Now, that's been the way it was from the very beginning of the church. If you go all the way back to the 12 disciples, we know that they were absolutely perfect. Can you say amen? Right? You know the stories of the original 12. I mean, maybe they weren't exactly perfect. The Peter, you know, he was kind of like a bull in the china shop. He, uh, you know, put his foot in his, his mouth. Anybody know somebody that does that on a regular basis, you know? But uh, besides that, everybody else was, you know, Know, a okay, right? I mean, they were wonderful. Well, maybe not. James and John, you remember Jesus kind of nicknamed them the Sons of Thunder. They got upset with some people and wanted fire to come down from heaven and dissolve them, just kind of take them away, you know. And I'm sure none of you ever feel that way about somebody else, right? You know, maybe some of our Baptist friends down the road, but none of us Methodists, right? We we would. Then, uh, but the rest of the twelve, right? They were all good, good. Uh, well. Oh, Thomas doubted some, right? We kind of call him Doubting Thomas. And, but if you get rid of them, I mean, everybody, well, don't forget Judas Iscariot either. And wow, we know his story. The reality is from day one, the church has been diverse. We're very different. And what the Apostle Paul is trying to say is that even in our shortcomings, even when we fall into sin, if we will just turn back, if we will come to the Lord, that he will guide us and lead us to all truth. Can you say amen? amen. Now, the rendition shortly here of the ABCs. The A, to remember the passage today, is the concept, dear friends, that God is always with us, always going to take care of us, and that he has arranged this body. The Apostle Paul is connecting the physical body, comparing it to the spiritual body. Now that raises in my mind all kinds of questions. In other words, you know, if God is completely sovereign, then do I have free will? Now Methodism comes from John Wesley, believes in free will. But if you look at Psalm 139, it says that when I was in my mother's womb, which gives the concept that um, life begins at conception. When I am in my mother's womb, you have marked out my days. You have set my days in order. Now, does that mean that it's just set in stone? Or, dear friends, is it possible that God has got his plan and that we have a choice to follow that plan? We as Methodists kind of fall in that direction, but maybe it's a combination because there's two distinct thoughts in that concept of the sovereignty of God. Now, the B of our ABCs talks about the body of Christ. The body has many different parts. Now, I know that all of you uh, over this last month, being with your pastor, have noticed that I've been growing a rug on my face. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. And, uh, you know, when you're trying to, to make that look good, and the reason I've kept it for right now, choir, is that it's not all white. I thought it would come out all white. And so it's, it's a blend of gray and red. And so when I look in the mirror, I think it looks pretty good. You know, I'm looking at there. So, and I know if you agree with me, say amen. Amen. You know, so I think, you know, well, you have to say that, you know, but if you get up close trying to, to take care of it or trim it, you men know this, it, you know, it, it, ding! I mean, the hairs are going everywhere, you know, in that light. So uh, maybe to you it looks like it's smooth, but it, it's not. And I, I look at that, this, even this morning, thinking about how the church is. We are diverse. We have so many ideas, so many thoughts, so many uh, uh, things that we look at in a certain way, and we don't understand why everybody else doesn't look at it like we look at it, because we look at it the way God looks at it. Amen? 
Isn't that the way we feel sometimes? And that's one reason I love, again, Methodism, because the allowance of a diversity of thoughts. We hold to the triune God. We hold to the Holy Word. But John Wesley himself wrote an incredible sermon on the Catholic spirit. And you know what he's talking about hundreds of years ago? About different modes of worship. Now, if you were here a little over an hour ago, we had uh, all kinds of musicians up here and playing a certain style of music, very different than the traditional liturgical service. And John Wesley is talking about different modes of worship. And he said, but if your heart is right, and he said, and if your desire is unto the Lord, give me your hand. Give me your hand. That's what that sermon is all about. Now, people have taken his thoughts and tried to put them in every kind of situation. He's not disagreeing in the truths of our faith. What he's disagreeing with, with others, is different modes of worship, and God is okay with that. Some of you are very quiet people. Some of you are more boisterous. God is a-okay with that. He loves opposites. And I believe, personally, that every one of us has a spiritual gift. The Bible says, if you seek, you will find. And if you were here last week, we mentioned where they are. Let me mention that again. It's in 1 Corinthians 12, earlier on in this passage. And it's also found in Romans chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter 4. These are all gifts of the Spirit. Some people can prophesy. They can speak about things that are powerful of God that they see. It's almost like a vision, uh, you know. And Now, I've never prophesied like that. I, I'm, I don't have those kind of gifts. But I admit, sometimes when folks share with me maybe a dream they've had, it's like I know what that means. And that's a gift of discernment. And sometimes God speaks in dreams. At least he did in the Bible. I know he speaks today. The first question I have, though, usually I ask him what they ate the night before. I want to make sure it's not, not pizza that's talking and it's God that is talking through them. There's all kinds of spiritual gifts, the gifts of service, the gift of mercy. Some people have so much love. The gift of faith. Now, I know we all have faith, but some people, you know, you say, if I need somebody to pray for me, I'm going to them because they just believe. When they pray, they believe. These are supernatural gifts, and I believe that every one of us has them, whether we recognize it or not. And that's where the body of Christ has got to work together in this experience. Now, a good definition of that, if you'd go to the resurrection story and One of the women came to the disciples. They were hiding. They were afraid. They should be of the Romans. And one of the women, first evangelists. Don't you love that? Women, they were the first evangelists. They're speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God. I don't know what you do when you say, well, women should be silent in churches, you know. I mean, obviously, that's not what that means, Uh, In our understanding, you know, what was Paul really talking about? Because the women were the first evangelists. They were the ones Jesus spoke to and said, go tell your disciples that are hiding over there that I have risen from the dead. And remember Peter and John run there, the two great disciples. And John is ahead of Peter because he's younger. But when he gets to the tomb, in respect, he doesn't go in. He waits for Peter Peter comes on the scene. Peter was the leader. Peter steps in and experiences God. John follows in, experiences God. They both see the exact same thing, and yet their record of that is different. The record of that is different. Again, showing that all of us as humans can see the exact same thing, but our experience is different because we come from a background of experiences. We have different genetics, a different makeup. We're all different, and God loves that. God loves us in our differences as long as he remains the head. Can you say amen? Amen. And then finally this morning, the C of the ABCs. You know, Paul says if your eye would look at the ear and say, you know, I'm not the ear, so I can't be part of the body of Christ. Or if the ear said, I'm not the eye, I mean, I'm no good at all. Paul says you will not seize, that'll be the C of our ABCs, you will not seize to be part of the body of Christ. Everybody is different. Everybody is different. And we see things differently. But we should respect one another, love one another, encourage one another, and build one another up for the kingdom of God. Now, where the Lord led me to have a few moments of prayer before we close out the service 
was for the congregation. I told you every Sunday now, I want to come down a few moments and just pray for you. Now, we can't pray for everybody in a few moments if you lift your hand. And I prayed and prayed this week. I said, Lord, what would we pray for in the reality of this passage of Scripture? Now, what came to me, and you'll think this is probably funny, I would imagine, you know, in Florida, sunny Florida, like today, right, where it's really warm and we're ready to go to the beach, sunny Florida, you can get sun tanned or you can get sun burnt. And people you're praying for have either been sun tanned spiritually or maybe they've been sun burnt. Maybe they have been hurt. Maybe things have been so difficult and they just don't know how to get out of the muck and mire that they're living in. We have the authority as Christians right here today to pray together for them, to rebuke the devil, to bind the powers of darkness and pray for the light of Christ to shine. We have no right to take away their choice. Some people believe that, but I don't. We can't take away their choice, but we can pray against the old devil so that he can back up a little bit, so that they can at least see a little clearly, so that they will make the decisions we know that if they were in their right heart, right mind, they would make. So we have that power of prayer, and we need to learn more about that, practice that. That's a spiritual gift that we can operate under as the church of Jesus Christ. So what I'm going to ask in the next few moments, and then we're going to pray for everybody that might lift their hands for a need that they have, is that I don't want you to mention the name today. We did that a couple weeks ago. But if you're praying for someone or something or some situation, I want you to give me one word that describes it. And I want you to lift your hand, and I'm just going to pick a few. And it might be depression. Uh, it might be alcoholism. It might be um, a marriage breakup. Just somebody in your family, friends, whatever. And we're all going to pray for them. And what that will do is put on our mind people in our own connection that has those kind of issues too. And we'll just pray together against the forces of evil. Now I'm going to do this every Sunday and even next week when I have uh, Barbara and Ray lead the service, the sermon part. When they finish, I'm going to be tying in with them to come out here. We'll be praying over love. A lot of people don't have love. Amen. And they don't know, they can't find it. So we're going to be praying about that for family members that you might have. Uh, that are facing those things. So does anybody, I'm going to start over here. Anybody over here uh, have a, a, a somebody you're praying for, maybe a, a term that would describe that area? Anybody? Yeah, right over here. Barbara? Divorce. Divorce. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for whoever that Barbara has lifted up, that she's thinking about dealing with divorce, whether that is something coming or something they've been through, the family that is a part of that. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray for your love to be poured out. We rebuke the darkness. We know the devil likes to get into those things and cause heartache and hurt. So we can't take away all the hurt and heartache, but we can take away the devil. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we rebuke the devil for getting in there to be removed. We put him at the feet of Jesus and pray for your light to somehow touch this family and all that are involved. In Jesus' name, amen. How about somebody right here? Yes, Lynn? Lost. lost. Somebody that's lost. Father, in Jesus' name, may your Holy Spirit take care of whoever is lost, whatever that represents. And maybe it's lost from your kingdom. Maybe it's lost from the family. Whatever it means, in Jesus' name, we pour for you, pray for your grace to be upon that need. In Jesus' name. Steve, you had one right up front here. Guilt. Guilt. Father, in Jesus' name. Those that are struggling with guilt that Steve's referring to, whoever that might be, in Jesus' name, that you would bring peace and healing, that you would somehow teach them, especially if they're outside the faith, that the Scripture says if we confess that you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us, and you remember, you remember even our own sins no more. Father, it's very hard to receive that sometimes. Be with this individual or individuals that Steve is referring to in Jesus' name. Amen. There was one more right here. Yes, Lynn? Bipolar. Wow. That touches my family as well. I'm sure there's others. Father, in Jesus' name, somebody that's struggling with the issue of being bipolar and all the family connections around that. Father, we just give that to you. Some of these medical needs we don't even know how to pray for, but we rebuke the darkness. We know the devil gets into even that. 
I mean, he just loves to be an author of confusion and attack the individuals. We rebuke that in Jesus' name and pray for your healing grace, your healing touch. We need it so much, Jesus. Amen. How about anybody right in here? Yes. Cancer. cancer. In Jesus' name, those that are dealing with cancer. That's so many of us have family, friends. Father, we pray for Virginia's connection. Dealing with cancer. In Jesus' name, that your Holy Spirit would take care of them. We know that cancer are rebellious cells. So we rebuke that in Jesus' name and pray for your healing touch. Lord, we just pray for your healing touch. Thank you for the miracle of medicine, but we pray for even more than that, a supernatural touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Tom? Pain. pain. Oh, my goodness. Lord, we just pray for those dealing with pain, sometimes uncontrollable pain. Sometimes pain management classes don't seem to work. There's just no way to get rid of that pain, whether it's psychological Mental, physical, emotional, Father, in Jesus' name, you're the great author of healing. You are a God of wholeness. Bring wholeness to this issue, this person, whoever it is that Tom is asking that we be in prayer for. In Jesus' name. Anybody way over here? Anybody way over here? Donna? Estrangement. Wow. Yeah, I have some of that. I know, like I said, every one of these, so we all do. Father, in Jesus' name, uh, issue of estrangement, somebody feeling separated from family, friends, connections. Lord, we just pray that somehow they will feel loved, connected. Sometimes there's illnesses, mental illnesses that, that go that way. There's sometimes addictions that lead that direction. Whatever the need is in, in Donna's family, friend, connection, whatever that is, in Jesus' name, we add our prayers to hers. Sometimes, as we said earlier, Lord, we don't even know the words to pray, but we pray in the Spirit, praying that your Holy Ghost will take care of that need. And you make groanings that we cannot even describe as you minister to that need. Thank you, Jesus. One more. Is there any from the choir? Right up here. Yes. Peace. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for peace. That's something we all need. That's what we prayed for Susan and Ron. We pray, Lord Jesus that you would bring peace to flow the need, whatever it is she's lifted up, whoever she's thinking about. You can do that. The peace that passes all understanding. That's one of the wonderful promises of God in Jesus' name. Sally, I saw your hand. Neuropathy. Neuropathy. Oh, my. Father, in Jesus' name, whoever she's talking about that is struggling with neuropathy, the, the loss of feeling and the increase of pain in the extremities, in Jesus' name, bring your healing touch. Bring your healing touch. Now, friends, we, don't, we, we can't just keep going. And we're just going to ask now at this time that if you have a special need, maybe you've been lifting your hand and maybe you've just got a need come to your mind. I want you to lift your hand to the Lord for a minute. I want to always end this way. Just lift it to the Lord for a moment. Father, you see our hands, we lift them in faith. We lift them corporately as the body of Christ. We're all different. We're all unique. And we are the body of Christ. And we cry out to you to take care of these needs that our hands represent, to bring healing and restoration, to bring wholeness and, and joy, and to bring peace and deliverance. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. A survey is going to be coming out from our church, from the worship committee. We brought this up at our last meeting in a variety of ways. And one of them is going to be this experimentation that we're doing now. Some of it's going to deal with the chancel area because we talked even about it's hard for everybody to see me with the pulpit and the podium and trying to figure out what's best, the time of the service. So many different things that will be coming out. We want to know where your heart is. We have our first administrative board meeting in the 1st of February. Some of our chairpersons are meeting this week in preparation, and that's coming up. Where, and I hope all of you that are members will be there to share with us. So you're going to get that survey. That was Corey's idea. I think it's an excellent idea as we go into this new year, a year of transition, because we want to be the church. We want to be the church that means the most to all of you gathered here whether you worship in different styles makes no difference. We want you to feel like when you leave this place, you've been in the presence of God and that God has touched us. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together for our closing hymn. And then at the very end, again, those that are going to be with me for the leaf for uh, Walter Davis, if you'll gather around the memorial tree. Miss June. If you will join me for our closing hymn this morning, we'll turn to page 620. 
and we'll sing um, first and second verses of One Bread, One Body. standing and Bonnie will give us our benediction. Thank you for being so patient with all that has happened today and we give special thanks to Leonard and Tammy and Chip running our sound because Andy being sick and those working with the choir and the music. There's so many that just step up to the plate and again if you want to know an update on Ron, my number is uh, if you call the church it goes on a voicemail and it'll give you my cell number and you can call me or text me. It goes right on my voicemail, and I'll get back with you and give you an update. Miss Bonnie? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you at the end of our service. We thank you for the message that you have given us throughout this day. Help us in all that we say and do this week. And may we truly be your hands and feet throughout the week. May we touch someone we come in contact with so that they may take that next step toward reaching out to you. We know it is a gift you give us. Mm. It is a gift we must accept. For that, we thank you for your son. Be with each one of us. We ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment as I extinguish the candles and then we will all exit together.
you, June and Julie, very much. Stepping up to the plate right at the last minute. Let's all rise together and may the love of Christ be with you. Turn and wave at your neighbor. Hope to see you next Sunday morning.